this section is 9.2 and so we have series and convergence and we have this series defined as basically all the sequence a in but added together because this is a summation symbol right so if you add up all this all the terms in the sequence you end up with what's called a series okay and it's called an infinite series because it keeps going all the way to infinity it doesn't stop at a real number okay however sn is just the sum of a certain number of terms not all the way to infinity just a certain number of terms and it's called the nth partial sum because it's not the whole sum there are more terms after a n right but it's a partial sum um, definitions of convergent and divergent series it says for the infinite series a summation as n goes to 1 to infinity of a n the nth partial sum is s n which is all the nth terms added together so from the first term all the way to the nth term all added together that's the partial sum um, this if the sequence of the partial sums converges to s or to any number um, s just being that number then the series a n converges the entire series not just the partial part of the series but the entire series the limit s is called the sum of the series so whatever that limit is that's going to be the sum of this series okay so basically you found um the whole limit now if sn diverges then the series diverges okay so let's look at this first example and see what they want us to do with that information so find the first five terms of the sequence of partial sums round your um Oh, it just says round to four decimal places. So first we've got to find the first four terms. So A1 is one over two, A2 is two over three, A3 is three over four, A4 is four over five, A5 is five over six. And so if I want to find Sn, then I need to add all of those together. four over five and five over six so I'm going to use my calculator here for that um, Okay, I was looking for a different button, but I don't have it. So I'm going to do 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3 plus 3 over 4 plus 4 over 5 plus 5 over 6. And let's put that in its fraction form just because I like fraction forms better, no reason. Um, and it says round to four decimal places, but that's not necessarily, it's not necessary in this particular problem because we only have two decimal places. So this is what I run. You don't need to put the zero zero after it, okay? Um, oh no, this is not what it wants. So basically what I have found it is S5. I found one of the pieces. What they wanted me to find was find the first five terms of the sequence of partial sums. So what they wanted me to find is all the first five partial sums. So S4 and S3 and S2 and S1. Now S1's easy, it's just one term, so it's one term, 0 0.5. S2 is one half plus two thirds. Um, this is one half plus two thirds plus three fourths. This is one half plus two thirds plus three fourths plus four fifths. So I'm going to go back up to this and just do them by deleting the last term. So now I get. 163 over 60, which is 
um, 2.7167 because this one I do have to round. And then I'm going to go back to that and delete the last term again to get the next one. And here I like the fraction version, so 23 over 12. But in the decimal that they want, I'm going to have to round that. Okay. And then now we're going to move on to this one. So let's take that and the next term so we get 7 over 6 which is 1.167 and the last one was a half or 0.5 so those are all make sure you enter them in the order that the computer wants them in um, but this is what they wanted and not just the last one so as far as the sequence um, goes, it's going to be 1 half, 7, 6, 23 over 12, um, 163 over 60, and 71 over 20. Now let's go ahead and go to the next page. So the next page talks about sequences of a specific form. So if you have a sequence which has some number, some real number here, multiplied by another real number here, raised to the power n. So then if you were to plug in n starting with 0, you would have this number raised to the 0 power, which is just 1, times a, which would just be a. Then if you plug in 1 here, this would be r, some number raised to the first r times a, which is a r. If you plug in 2, you'd have a squared here. Then if you plug in 3, a cube, so a r cubed. Up until you plug in n, whatever number that is, um, you'd get this expression here. And it keeps going all the way to infinity, of course, right? Now this only holds if a is not equal to 0. Because if it is equal to 0, then all the terms are 0, and you don't really have a sequence in this form, okay? The geometric is sequence is called, I mean, I'm sorry, this series is called a geometric series, as long as the r does not equal zero as well. Because if it did, then all you would have is this, okay? Which is just a constant. It is not um, in this bright form, okay? Now the convergence of a geometric series has a theorem. It says that the series converges with the ratio r, or I'm sorry, the geometric series with the ratio r diverges when r, the absolute value of r, so r could be negative, but if the absolute value of r is bigger or equal to 1, then it will diverge. But if that, that ratio is less than 1, the absolute value of it is less than 1, then the series converges. And specifically, it converges to this sum given here. Okay? Now, this is one of the first rules that we have, um, we have one rule before that talks about the partial sequence, the partial sums, and the sequence of partial sums, if that converges, then so does the infinite series, right? Um, but here, and this is not the correct word, sequence is just a list of terms, but when you have that summation in front of it, it's called the series. So that was the wrong word there. Um, but here we have this. So here in my instance, a is equal to 4. That's the number in front. My ratio is 2 fifths. Okay? And it says find the sum. Since the absolute value of 2 fifths is less than 1, then this thing will converge. And so there is, in fact, a sum. And the sum can be found by taking a, which is 4, over 1 minus r, which is 2 fifths. So we get 4 over 3 fifths, which is the same as 4 times 5 thirds, which is the same as 20 over 3. Now, depending on what WebAssign wants, they may accept the fraction or they may specifically ask you to write the answer in decimal form. That all depends on WebAssign. Okay, let's go ahead and continue to the third example. Um, it says find the sum of the convergent series and it has this. So it's telling you it's convergent but it wants you to find the sum. So in order to do that, we need to take a look at the partial sequence, okay? The partial sum sequence. 
So if I want to look at Sn, right, the partial sequence Sn, what would the first term be? The first term would be as if I plugged in 1 for all of the n's. So I would get 1 over 2 or minus 1 over 3. Then if I add the next term, I would get plug in 2 for n. So this here, n equals a 1. This one, n equal to 2. So I'd get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. And if I keep going, 1, n equal to 3, I'd get 1 over 4 minus 1 over 4. Five. And if I kept going, maybe I tried n equal to n minus 1, something like that, right? The term right before the last term, okay? I'd get 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 would just be n, and then n minus 1 plus 2 would be n plus 1. And then if I finally go with n, the last nth term, right? The last term I should be looking at for sn. I would have 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2, okay? So notice the pattern that's happening. This term here, negative 1 third, would cancel with this positive 1 third, the negative 1 fourth with the positive 1 fourth. So this term with its positive 1 fifth. This term would actually cancel with the one before it with its negative 1 over n. And negative 1 over n cancels with negative 1 over n plus 1. These two guys cancel. So all you would be left with in this this um, summation here is 1 over 2 minus 1 over n plus 2. Now, if you take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, this fraction would actually go to zero, which means the limit would be one half. Therefore, s would be one half. So the sum of this is one half, but by our theorem, that means the sum of the infinite series is also one half. And again, if WebAssign asks you to type that in as fractions, then go ahead and do so. If not, then you leave it like that. Okay. I am going to stop the video here and we'll continue on another video for the last example.